Hello and welcome to Dickinson Dulcimer's instruction videos for beginner and advanced beginner hammer dulcimer players. This is one of 40 lessons designed to take you from the very beginning when you first purchase a hammer dulcimer to the intermediate level. These instruction videos are free. We ask only that you consider joining our mailing list and visit our site often. Let's get started. Today we are going to discuss how to set up your hammer dulcimer, the basic anatomy of a hammer dulcimer, and how to get it in tune. Setting up your hammer dulcimer is, for the most part, a matter of personal taste. It involves two decisions, basically how high do you want it to be and at what angle. Some players like to have their dulcimer up high and some like to have it low. Uh, I like to have my hammer dulcimer so that the wide part at the bottom is about the same level as my belt. Some players like to have a lot of tilt in their dulcimer. Uh, this dulcimer you see in the picture is at a 45 degree angle, which for me is way too much. And many players, even professionals such as Dan Landrum and Stephen Humphreys, play with their dulcimers completely flat. The vast majority of players set their dulcimer up at about a 30 degree tilt, which looks like this. This is how my dulcimer is set up, and this is the dulcimer that I'll be using throughout these videos. Okay, now that we have our hammer dulcimers set up, let's talk about the anatomy of the hammer dulcimer, how it's put together and what the different parts are, the things that you'll be using to play your dulcimer, and the different parts that we'll be discussing as we go through these videos. First of all, let's talk about the strings. You may have purchased a 1514 dulcimer or a 1211. What do those numbers mean? 1514 refers to the number of courses across the two bridges. In a 1514 dulcimer, the 15 refers to the number of courses across the treble bridge. Now this is called the treble bridge on a hammer dulcimer. This is called the bass bridge. Across the treble bridge, these double sets of strings are stretched from the tuning pins on the left to pegs on the right. Each double set of strings is called a course. If you begin at the bottom, the bottom string, and by the way, my dulcimer uh, was made by Jerry Reed Smith in, uh, in, North, in Black Mountain, North Carolina at Song of the Wood, and Jerry Reed Smith makes some of the greatest hammer dulcimers in the world. This dulcimer is a grand concert master, and it is larger than most dulcimers. So it is larger than a 1514. So I'll tell you that these strings here on the bottom and the strings up at the top that I'll point to in just a moment are not on most, or they're not on a 1514 dulcimer. So if you have a 1514 dulcimer, your strings on the treble bridge begin here, and there are 15 sets, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. At the top of your dulcimer, this is the top string. The 14 number in the 1514 refers to the strings across the bass bridge, and if you have a 1514 dulcimer, then the 14 courses begin here. Now, I have these bottom three bass strings that Jerry Reed Smith included on this great, on this grand concert master that you will not find on most, on, on 1514 dulcimers and on most dulcimers. So your 1514 will begin here and there'll be 14 courses. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And the 1514 dulcimer will, will end, this will be the top course on the base bridge. On each of the bridges you'll notice there are bridge markers. On my dulcimer they're white. On some dulcimers, they're black or other colors. They're there to, they're called bridge markers to help you know where you are when you're playing the dulcimer. We'll talk a lot more about bridge markers as we get into some of the lessons on technique and how to play the dulcimer. But for now, just know that these are bridge markers and they're used to show you where you are in reference to other strings and markers when you're playing the dulcimer. All right, we have our dulcimer set up and now it's time to put it in tune. In order to do that, you have to have an electronic tuner. Uh, I have selected this Boss electronic tuner, which I've used for many years. Uh, many dulcimer players use smartphone apps that you can download for three or four dollars. Uh, I know I have one called ClearTune. Works just fine, but they all work the same. They have a needle or some indication to tell you when a particular tone is in tune. So I'm going to Turn this tuner on, and I have selected this string here to try to put in tune. Now, 
you know that you notice that the strings on a hammer dulcimer in pairs that we've already discussed they're called courses both strings are tuned to the same note so when you play one of the strings both strings vibrate even though you didn't strike the top string and I'll show you I'm going to pluck the bottom string and then deaden it and you can hear the top string is still playing so in order to tune that bottom string I need to deaden the top string and I do that with these fingers in the middle I'll just touch the top string with a finger and then pluck the bottom one with my fingernail so I touch the top one and pluck it and I put the tuning wrench on the tuning pin that corresponds to that string and I tighten it or loosen it you'll notice it's in tune on the right side and in tune on the left side so in order to I'm going to put it out of tune a little bit so now that string is not in tune and you can hear when I pluck them both you can hear it's not in tune so let's put it in tune I'm going to deaden the top string and with the tuning wrench Now I'll check the left side, and it's in tune. And we follow that procedure on all of the strings for the treble bridge and on the strings for the bass bridge using the tuning pins on the right side.